How you doing, big boy? Fine, fine. Okay. Long time no see. Long time. Can you tell us a little bit about your early career when you were playing uh, keyboards on sessions for other people? Well, I was never classically trained or, or, or never took piano lessons much. I, I kind of took about a year of piano lessons as a small kid. Uh, what I learned about piano, I learned kind of in odd bits and pieces uh, growing up and just listening to records. Well, one of my big influences was uh, Ray Charles, but I was uh, so lazy. You know, I, I wish I was a better piano player. Really, I, I can play in a couple of keys, maybe. You know, uh, and I've always kind of approached it more as a songwriter than as a, actually as a piano player. I did, oddly enough, play on sessions when I first came to California, but it was like the you know I was like the great imposter. You know, I, I'd get these sessions and. Only hope that no one got wise to me before the end of the session. Or, you know. <laughs> well, you might have thought you were an imposter, but if they kept calling you again, maybe you were wrong. Well, yeah, I, but I think one of the important things I learned early on was is that uh, key to any piano part is just the movement you choose, you know, to to apply to the the song and the tempo and the rhythm of the, you know. So, uh, and I think I, I picked that up listening to old R and B records, specifically Ray Charles. He was just so great about uh, his application of uh, piano. I think, to me, one of the the most classically genius uh, bits of improvisation uh, I ever heard was on uh, Ray Charles' record of uh, "Busted," you know, uh, where the opening thing there's this big horn chart going on, and you know he's got this little one bar space to play something in, you know, it's like ba ba da ba da ba da da ba da da ba da ba ba and you know he could have done a million things. He could have just you know played all over the place, but he just chose to do the which is just, you know, to me pure genius, you know, it just it says all there needs to be said in that moment in time and uh just sets up the whole record and and uh uh, it, it, you know, it was perfect, you know, and, and I, I think that always taught me something about, you know, sometimes just the simplest statement musically is the most important thing you can say at that moment in time. You know? Well, you've just uh, recorded a couple albums of covers. Now, when you are looking at a new song, there are lots of different ways you could play it, and you as a keyboard player have got some really great accompaniment styles under your fingers. Can you show an example of how you might play the same song, uh, maybe in two different styles or three different styles? Uh, because after all, I think a lot of people don't appreciate that uh, a keyboard player or a rhythm section player in general is always improvising. You know, they're improvising their parts and they're sure. getting things that are compatible. But when you're looking at a new song that's going to work for you and your voice, what kind of possibilities are there for you? Well, uh, that's that's interesting. I mean, you know, uh, we've recorded older songs over the years that, uh, you know, just by virtue of being older songs, they kind of called for a little bit of improvisation to bring something new to the record, and uh, and that can happen in a, in, a, in a myriad of different ways. Sometimes it's um, melodic improvisation, you know, which I think is what most people think of when they think of improvising. Uh, I, what I think of more than anything is is uh, chord alteration you know uh is there something harmonically that can be brought to just the the chord progression that that uh kind of expands the feeling tonally you know and, and maybe with this exact same melody as before over that sometimes the juxtaposition of that is more powerful than 
taking a lot of liberties with the melody, you know, to me. Uh, you know, I guess one, one point would be uh, we, we recorded just recently a, a track with uh, Ray Charles. Um, hey Girl was a Carole King song, a uh, Jerry Goffin song. And uh, Ray had thought that I had written that song. That's why he... And, uh, and uh, I, it almost broke my heart to tell him I didn't write it because <laughs> I, I could tell that he really thought I had something going on by having virtue of having written that song which I didn't write uh, but once I got over the hump of telling him I'm sorry Ray I didn't write that uh, I realized he really loved that tune and, and one of the things that's great about that tune is just in its natural state the chord progression is, is, is really kind of brilliant you know it's uh, uh, hey girl I want you to know I'm gonna miss you so much if you go Hey girl Hell you know lie Something deep Inside of me is going to die This is so lonely This is goodbye Oh And then we kind of improvised on the second verse with these changes Hey girl can be true How am I Supposed to exist without you Hey girl Sit yourself down I'm not Ashamed to get down But it's just in that one little movement that... Sure. Now, just as an example for our listeners, if a producer, if you were on a session, a producer said, hey, Michael, what if we did this song with a little bit more of a, 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 you know, a harder rhythm groove? How would you maybe, you know, you've done a very beautiful kind of ballady version of that. Sure. What if we wanted to put something like, you know, whatever... Oh uh, well, you know, you you might uh, with drums and bass uh, playing, a, kind of locking in a, a, a rhythm pattern. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, a lot of um, your kind of um, trademark Michael McDonald keyboard parts on, on a lot of the really successful records you've done use a lot of uh, sort of triadic work uh, in in a way that's reminiscent of gospel. Can you talk about a little bit about how you use some gospel piano techniques in your accompaniment? Well, um yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, so much of, uh, like, gospel vocal arrangements is 
big triads and things like that. There's a lot of power in those kind of songs. I think in classical music, it's really a derivative of a kind of a, uh, African influence in American music rhythmically. But it, it, I think the African experience in America was to learn kind of like uh, classically Anglo kind of songs from church, you know, uh, that were like traditional hymns that were more hearkened to like classical music of the early 1700s, late 1600s, yeah. you know, uh, written by, uh, you know, Anglo composers, but they were adapted into more uh, kind of uh, African rhythms, you know. Uh, your th your thing, I mean, like, for instance, even taking the beginning of or your, your piano intro for What a Fool Believes, you know, there's a lot of these moving triads that uh -huh. you use a lot, and they're very effective because they're usually moving over a stationary bass note a lot of times and yeah. and you use that a lot and it, it's very rhythmically powerful and also melodic but it seems to me to hark back to a kind of a gospel keyboard technique yeah i, I mean i was introduced to gospel music growing up in st louis uh some of the guys i played with and you know had grown up in church playing and so it was just a, it immediately kind of attracted me i i always felt like i was a uh, you know at best uh kind of a poor man's attempt to, uh, you know, to play that kind of music. But, you know, for instance, like with Taking to the Streets, that was very much in a gospel structure. With... And, you know, and, and we've kind of, over the years, taken that to, uh, embellished on that whole, you know, uh, that was the, basically the, the lick there and the, the song kind of travels over the, the you know. Anymore now, it's kind of more like a... A one in five, you know. Yeah. Another thing in gospel music, uh, minor over major. And a lot, exactly. of, a lot of diminished chords and a lot of, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all those things, you know, are, are uh, really kind of. Uh, Taken from kind of classical music and and uh, and adapted, uh, you know, I could say by uh, people, uh, you know, the, the African American culture and and what eventually became uh, blues and gospel. You know. But you've always, uh, throughout, I think, everything that I've ever heard you you do, you've maintained that relationship with the piano, and and you've you've always used your own distinctive style to give your particular treatment of music a, a special sound and it's used all of these different things and can you just maybe talk a little bit more about how when you're presented with a brand new song you know what ideas occur to you as as possible ways to go well uh i i never really know till i get there kind of thing you know but uh i find when i'm playing other people's things i, I try to kind of um adapt something of my own style to to that if, if if i can actually say i have my own style my my style is just a kind of an amalgam of a million things you know um but uh well you know there was a nancy wilson song that for years i wanted to record and it was like a uh, i forget the, how the original lick went it was like a play it we kind of just alter it a little bit to a more rhythmic uh... my love has no beginning my love has no end my love won't break and my love won't bend
but um, my band always tells me I play like an old woman. But um, <laughs> you know, I just you know always looking for just a little different rhythmic approach than something that. But you know, that kind of lends itself to the original idea. But it, uh, maybe it's just a, uh, something you can dig into a little more. You know. And I guess that's also a result of. I mean, you were, you know, a live performer from the time you were a teenager. So all of those influences and all of those gigs that you've played, something's stuck, and you've, you can draw on all that the next time you look at a new song, you can say... Well, that, that's true, yeah. So many times, you know, uh, I think anybody's style of playing comes from all the records they learned to play along with when they were a kid, you know. You just kind of, you always go away with something, and hopefully it's it, it's... You know, kind of reinvents itself uh, under your hands. You know, uh, subconsciously somehow. You know. Yeah, a lot of the musicians we've talked to have talked about how they build their vocabulary of available uh, ammunition mm -hmm. for for the next song. Yeah, no, I, I think every time you learn some uh, a new song, I found even doing these remote town records that, uh, in in a, a strange way, they doing these songs just kind of taught me how to sing all over again. You know, just. Uh, I found that, you know, in order to sing these songs, I had to kind of call on parts of my voice I hadn't really used, you know, uh, uh, physically speaking. So, and it kind of opened up that whole area for me, again, to apply to the stuff I've been singing for years, you know. Yeah, and that's, I mean, actually, you're a multi instrumentalist and you're playing two instruments at the same time, and you're improvising on two instruments at the same time because you're singing and you're playing the piano. And I noticed it. Even on the gig that we did, you know, you didn't sing the same song exactly the same way twice. No, no, I try, you know, try not to, only because you know you, you start to fall into uh, ruts that way. I think you know I, I don't do it so much for any other reason than to not just kind of you know carve a melody too much the same way in, in my voice, that, you know, in my brain and voice, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that I can kind of just keep it loose, you know. Uh, for whatever reasons, you know, I think you know, you, you, as a vocalist, you got to be careful not to sing in the same range and the same material all the time because you, you start to kind of limit your voice to just those things that you do, you know. Yeah. Well, you've superbly done everything I needed you to do okay, for the show, great, and that's great. That's fantastic. So, we done, baby. Well, Richard, thanks. Yeah. Fantastic.